Uh, good morning, my YouTube viewers. Crystal here. Um, my boyfriend has been kind enough to allow me to use his Chromebook. So I'm making this video this morning from my boyfriend's Chromebook. Last night, what I did was I did a test. Uh, I, I did a competition called HR Analytics with Analytics Vidhaya. And basically, um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to show that to you and um, I re wrote the program on Google Colab and when I finished the program I submitted it to Analytics Vidhaya and I got an F1 score of close to 52 and the highest score was about a 53 which was good and um, I'll show you the work that was mine and the work that I had to have a little help on because obviously I'm new and I haven't got everything memorized yet. So that means I have to look at other programs to get some help. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this code review and we're going to go over uh, the code that I've put on my GitHub account. So this is where... I've imported all of my library. So you can see where I've imported all of my library. And this file is on GitHub as well. So you can go to my account on GitHub and look at the file if you want to. And then what I did was I read the files. I, re I load up all three files at the same time. So I read the train file, the test file, and the sample t submission. So here's your train file. Here's a description of the train file. Here's information regarding the train file. And uh, what I've done now is I put in some code to see if there were any null characters. And we found out that there are null characters in two columns. I also did a value counts on is promoted. So you know that 50,140 50, didn't get promoted and 4,668 did get promoted. Then I wanted to see the percentage of men who got promoted, and it was approximately 8% of the men who got promoted. And I wanted to see a percentage of the women who got promoted, and it was approximately 9% of the women who got promoted. So percentage-wise, more women got promoted than men. Then we wanted to see the test file, so you can see the test file. I wanted a description of the test file, and I wanted information about the test file. What I did was I put in some code to see uh, if there were any missing, missing values in the test file, and we found out that in previous year rating and education, there were missing values. So what I did was I filled uh, the education column that had empty values with mode and I filled the previous year rating column that had empty values with median. So you can see that I did that. And so what I did was I checked to see if there were any null characters in the train file and the test file and there were no more null characters in the train file and the test file. So now you can see the train file and you can see the test file. Now, what I wanted to do is I wanted to group all of these data together to see, you know, how, how many um, categories you had in each column. So we grouped the department a column with the is promoted and you can see that they had nine categories. So what I did was I made a dictionary and I put the nine categories in a dictionary and so and I replaced those with numbers. 
So the dictionary, so the department is now numbers instead of a string. I did the same thing with the test file. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to test the regions and see how many regions there were. And so you can see there's 34 regions. And what I did was um, I took out the text that said region underscore and just left the number there. So now you can see region, there's only a number. I did the same thing with the test file. And now what I did was, because the region was still a string, so um, what I did was I converted region to an integer. And so you can see that region now is an integer. I did exactly the same thing with the test file. And what I did was I grouped the people up by education. So you can see it was bachelor's, below secondary, and master's. So the first thing that I did was I took out the as above and above string um, to make sure that that didn't appear. And then I took out the... Um, the S, apostrophe S. So now you can see that the education was master, bachelor, and below secondary. So we had to get rid of the apostrophes because that was going to mess up your value. And then I was looking at somebody else's work and he did it another way. But when I tried to do it another that way that he recommended doing it, it went into error. So my way is like more simplistic, but at least it got the job done. So I did exactly the same thing with the test file. So I created a dictionary called Ed. And so below secondary was zero, bachelor was one, master was two. And then I put the dictionary into the column. So now there's no longer any text in the column. It's now an integer. I did exactly the same thing with the test file. I wanted to see the genders of the people. So it was um, more double men than women, which is interesting really because slightly more women were promoted than men, but there were twice as many men as women. So that's interesting. But I made a dictionary and females were zero and males were one. And I replaced the F and M with numbers. So now gender is now an integer. I did exactly the same thing with the test file. So I wanted to see the recruitment channel. So you can see, I put in some text there, a group by code to see the recruitment channel. There were three recruitment channels. So I made a dictionary called other was zero, referred was one, and scoring was two, created that dictionary, and I replaced the dictionary with the strings. So now the recruitment channel no longer has any um, uh, strings, it's just an, an integer. I did exactly the same thing with the um, test file. So now what I wanted to see was number of trainings, and uh, that was a text file. So that was a, a, an integer or a number. So I didn't have to do anything with that. I wanted to see the ages. Again, that was a number. So I didn't have to do anything with that. I wanted to see the previous year's rating. So that was a number. So I didn't have to do anything with that. And then what I wanted to do was um, previous year rating. 
I changed it from a float to an integer. So you can see that in the um, train file, all of the columns are now integers. Did exactly the same thing with the test file. So all of the columns are integers. And then what I wanted to see was the length of surface. So that was um, the length of service was um, a number. So I didn't have to do anything with that. I wanted to see KPI met greater than 80%. So that was a number. I didn't have to do anything with that. Awards one, I wanted to see that. That was a number, so I didn't have to do anything with that. So average training score was a number, so I did not have to do anything with that. And then what I did was I created a heat map, and you can see the heat map that I created. And I tried to create some other maps, which I created. I created the other maps, but it took a long time to do it. And my system crashed, and I was worried that it was contributing to the system crashing. And I don't think that it added that much value to this program anyway, because you just had lots and lots of charts, and you would have to analyze all those charts. And I feel that I was able to adequately display the data using the group buys anyway. So because I was worried that the system was going to crash, which it did crash, it crashed several times, um, I took it out. So now what I did was I prepared the data. I set up what my Y value as train get, is promoted, and I set up my features. And my features were all of the columns except employee ID. And... Um, all of the columns were did integers now, so they didn't have to have anything done to them because I made them integers. I set up my X value as a get dummies train features, and I set up X test as get dummies test features. So I wanted to see what X looked like, so you can see what X looks like. And then what I did was I split my train file into X train, X validation, Y train, well, Y validation, and I used train test split. And so you, I had to put in my X value, my Y value, the test size was 20% and the random state was one. And then what I did was I used standard scalar to bring all the features into the same range. And then what I did was I built my models and I borrowed this algorithm right here from my Titanic algorithm. So when I, because the Titanic was a binary output as well. So I'd use the Titanic algorithm, but I added XGB to it. So um, we did a test to see which, um, module so which algorithms gave the highest score and it just so happened the xgb gave the highest score because it gave a 0.93 so that was the highest score and then i did another box plot to compare the algorithms and i was able to do that because i had used standard scalar to get all of the values into the same um, number scale number range so I made my predictions on the validation set and I decided to use XGB classifier. I had to borrow the fine tuning from the winner of the HR analytics hackathon because um, that helped increase my score. So I did a test on this. I just wanted to see what the sample submission looked like. So you can see what the sample submission looks like. So I did my output. The output is going to be employee ID and is promoted. And I gave you a little message that said your submission was successfully saved. This output was saved to a CSV file called my submission. And I went into um, HR 
the hackathon HR analytics and you can see that this is my submission so I got close to 52 percent on this try and you can see right here my submission right here so you can see that I had another no, a number of tries my first try was um, zero and then my second try was 36% and I thought, oh, that's terrible. That's terrible because I didn't realize that these people were going with the F1 score and the highest F1 score was um, this guy right here and it was close to 54%. So I'm only 2% lower than the highest score. So that's not too bad. So that concludes it for uh, this presentation on HR analytics using XGB. Uh, if you like my video, please like, subscribe, and share. Let me know what you think of this video. If you like the work I'm doing, I've got my email address down below. If you want to make a donation to my PayPal account, because it will certainly come in handy to help me with my many living expenses. And thank you so much for watching this video. And I look forward to making the next one for you to watch.